Hi, and welcome to another edition of Translating John Mueller. My name is Josh Bashinsky. I'm an SEO with over 20 years experience, and I've been translating and interpreting John Mueller's cryptic statements on SEO for many, many years. And so don't watch John Mueller alone. I will translate for you. I will explain to you what he means. I will give you some commentary and some context on what John Mueller is saying for all the latest John Mueller Hangouts, which he calls the English Webmaster uh, Central Offers Hours Hangouts. That comes strippingly off the tongue, let me tell you. So just uh, watch me and I'll interpret, and we'll start the video now, and I'll tell you, I'll uh, go through what John Mueller says and uh, kind of explain what's going on. So we'll start now. All right, welcome everyone to today's Webmaster Central Office Hours Hangout. My name is John Mueller. I am a Webmaster Trends Analyst here at Google in Switzerland. Ooh, yes, and part of likes. what we do are these Office Hour Hangouts where webmasters can join us and uh, ask questions around the website. Oh, okay. It's been question. kind of like a little bit of what, and then when it hits, by the way, when it hits, it's fine. I have no complaints when it hits, but there seems to be this like lag time. Yeah, I, I don't know. Okay, I don't even, I don't even need to lead, listen to what he said. It, John, I'm not ranking, and um, the spam is in the the, the algorithm, and uh, help me, I don't know what to do. Uh, John, help. What's, what? no, no, John will answer, and I'm sure he'll give a, I'm sure he'll just be like, oh, edit your meta tags, and boom, this guy will be right back in the rankings. Watch, let's see. But the current situation is there. I, I've seen a few reports of that, uh, so you're, you're probably not alone, but I I don't know what, what the current situation there is, if that's something that's been resolved or if, if they're still finalizing some things there. Okay, and what, one last question, it's not a major one, but um, I noticed like when we link to something, whether it's a third party or our own stories, mm -hmm. we tend to link on several of the words that sort of replicate the, uh, the permalink, just because it's easier for the, the reader to know you know, so when people buy links off our site, you know, we try to use the exact match anchor text that they ask us to use. So, um, are we going to get penalized? I love that word, penal, penalized. Are we going to get penalized for this, John? Where they're going to be redirected to. What, what? But I notice a lot of other places do it maybe on a word like reports or claims or, or maybe even another outlet's just their name. Is there a best practice on that? Um, that's the, we call that the anchor text of the link. So kind of the, the part of the text that is linked out. And we recommend having a kind of descriptive anchor text so that we can understand the context of the other page a little bit better. Okay, so for those of you who are not paying attention, when he says a descriptive anchor text, that's a direct admission that they want exact match anchor text so that they know what the heck their so their algorithms can tell what, what the, the page they're pointing at is about. Yes, they still need that, and yes, you can still use it, and no, there's no frequencies or ratios you need to do. You would learn that if you were in my mentorship group. I can't, you know, that has nothing to do with what John Mueller's saying here. I know because I've done scientific experiments and I can prove it. But they, even John Mueller still is admitting here that you need exact match anchor text. That's what he means when he says descriptive anchor text. Uh, but uh, it's something where we, we know lots of sites do that in weird ways. Uh, sometimes you'll have something like, for more information about this and this, click here, and here is just the link, which yeah. makes it really hard for us to tell. Uh, but we try to look at the context of the link as well. So it's not terrible if we, if we don't have a clear anchor text that leads there. It helps us to understand the other page a little bit better, but it's not uh, like the, the absolute most critical factor. Yeah, now, interestingly, that's what I found in our experiments as well, is that the anchor text, although it helps, as John Mueller is saying, is not the major crucial factor. In fact, there's a bigger backlink factor other than the anchor text, which is way, way, way more important than that can increase the power of your backlinks by at least three to five times. And if you, what is it? I'll tell you if you join my mentorship group. That's right, yes. Uh, ultimately, it's just a big upsell from my mentorship group. But no, I can't, I can't tell you what it is because Google will listen. Uh, 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 Kyle's site is rhinoplasty plano test site recently got outed by some asshole on search engine uh journal and so all of his tactics are going to be put out to google and his site has both been both de-indexed and the other guy uh, igor who was in the, in the in the contest got de-indexed and he also got a pure spam manual penalty so if you don't think google is not watching and will will very 
critically burn our asses if we let out our, 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 our SEO secrets, then you're just as foolish as all these people down here listening to John Mueller as their primary source of evidence. It'll be very funny when I join in here later on, actually, because I'm one of those idiots too sometimes, but, but okay. We, we try to do that because, you know, you don't want to direct someone the wrong way, but sometimes you have to kind of dance around to get the words that sort of match enough. <laughs> so yeah. I, that's why I wanted to ask. Okay, thank you. Translation, I thought maybe, this guy right down here, I thought maybe that exact match was some kind of penalty, so we don't want to do it, but we want to do it when we're selling our links, and that's great, John. Yes, that's great. Thank you. Okay, they both smile. That makes sense. That makes perfect sense, yeah. All right, let's see. I got another question as well. Okay, go for it. Hey, um, so basically we have a website that um, we're in multiple different markets. So we're in the Australia, US, and UK as our core. Our number one market of that is uh, Australia. But we're moving, uh, we're changing TLDs. We're going from a, a dot .travel to a dot .com. Um, can we expect any- Don't ever change your domain name. Don't ever change your URL. If you like your rankings, don't ever change your domain name and don't ever change your URL. Now we're gonna have a problem. Any type of, you know, besides the standard traffic decrease that you would get from changing, um, you know, domains, can we expect any permanent, uh, you know, decreases in visibility in our core market, Australia? Um, from that well, yeah, definitely, because you have travel in the URL string right now. So if you're ranking for any queries that have travel in it, which I'm assuming you do, you're losing a huge ranking uh, bonus because you have the word travel in your URL string, which right now, if you had done some scientific testing, you would know is the biggest uh, uh, of all the on-page or on-site factors for keywords. That is the biggest one and always has been the biggest one and still is the biggest one. Yes, yes, EMD still work. The domain string is still the, the, the uh, most uh, powerful ranking of, uh, signal for, for keywords. Not the only one by far, but the most powerful one still. So no, you should not be doing this. And look at John Mueller. Hmm. This is look at his face. This is a bad idea. I should tell this person no. But how can I get myself out of this answer? On that move. Mm -hmm. Is there more of like a neutral uh, preference being given to the dot travel versus the dot com? So we would see both of those as generic top level domains, uh, yeah. meaning they they could both be geo-targeted in any way that you want. Uh, so theoretically, if you do a clean migration from like travel to .com and you really redirect one by one all of the URLs, then theoretically that should be- Page to page, just as John said. About the same as before. So it shouldn't be that, that you'd see any, any significant drop in visibility. Okay. I disagree. Um, also, we don't have like um, different, um, you know, like we don't, we don't have like a regionalized website either. Um, all of our markets speak English. Is there, um, do you think there's any need to move to that type of uh, regionalized folder structure um, yet? Totally depends on your audience. So okay. that's that's something where I, I'd say if you don't need it, then don't add that exp extra complexity. Uh, yep. Because adding all of those different country versions does make it a lot harder not. to blah, blah, blah. understand each of those sites separately. And yada yada. Okay, next one. Great. Thanks for your answer. <laughs> no problem, buddy. <laughs> Hi, John. Hi. Hi, I'm George. Um, we started a editorial website okay, or dealing uh, with the topic of electric mobility, and we took over a URL uh, with our brand. And after that, unfortunately, we found out that someone before us, maybe half a year, two years ago, uh, used that URL for uh, piracy content. And if, oh no! If we take a look in the Google Transparency Report, we can see that there has been a lot of trouble with that URL. Uh, is there any way to get a some kind of reset at Google? Because we do not have any connection to the former owner of this URL. And of course, we do not have any piracy content on our editorial offering. So what should we do? You should not buy age domains because that's entirely possible when you buy an age domain, especially if you want to make it not just even like a PBN backlink, you want to make it your main domain you're running off of. That's why you shouldn't do that. You should always register something new. 
So this is something that settles down over time. Uh, I, I think I took a look at your site. You also posted a question, right? Yeah, correct. Well, yes. Um, so I, I think your, your site is still fairly new and that's something where it, it will settle down over time. Uh, but it's, it's always a bit tricky if your domain has a lot of- Settles down over time. <laughs> that like two years it'll take two it'll settle down over time not a big deal you can wait can't you every business has a surplus a profit of two billion dollars a year don't you that's what <laughs> that's what i'm used to here at google <laughs> and also pay attention to what he just said he says i'm very important actually i will go back we're at 710 i'll go back maybe to here now listen to this we knew and that's something where it, it will settle down over time now this uh, but it's it's always a bit tricky if you're Whenever John Mueller says the word tricky, run for the hills, <laughs> because that means something bad. That means something very, very bad. He's trying to tell you not to do this. He's trying to tell you you're screwed. He's trying to tell you this is bad, but people are not listening. Your domain has a lot of bad history associated with it. So that's something where I kind of take a look at the, the old history there and think about, is this... Like, Should I keep this domain name? Should I have bought it in the first place? This is John Mueller trying to very gently tell you you're fucked. That's what he's trying to tell you. Really problematic, or is this like a temporary phase that was involved with the site? And it's essentially just something fairly small that will just uh, disappear on its own. Um, try to figure out if, if it's something that you kind of need to take action on or where you just want to kind of move forward and focus on your, your normal business. So again, that guy is pretty much screwed. If you listen to that language, you'll, you'll know he's pretty much screwed. He's going to say something else, blah, blah, blah. What does he say now? Here on its own. Okay, thanks. So you would not recommend to take a different URL because that would be, to be honest, a very bad solution for us. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> poor guy. <laughs> oh, geez. Uh, yeah, I would recommend, dude. I would recommend taking a new URL. I know how long that'll take. That'll take two, three months. Really. Depends how well. You're not ranking very well at all now. So what, what difference does it make? It'll be fixed in two to three months. Maybe even faster if you take, take a, make a completely new URL. Um, uh, 301 everything over but you don't have 301 you just want to make a whole new url and just like just make it and see if google starts ranking instead of this current one because the because the privacy issues you have nothing to lose you have absolutely nothing to lose uh because this thing john Mueller is talking about could take years to, to to rectify quite frankly and when he says it's tricky he starts giving you warnings that should be the warning sign red klaxons like in aliens you start going off the face huggers are coming for your face I, I would only do that if you really have a really yeah. Blah, kind blah, of blah, really, blah, really blah, bad blah, blah, yeah, to bite the bullet and yeah, uh, take a different Whenever he says bite the bullet, you're screwed. Uh, you can check in archive.org to see what the old content was. Oh, God, he's still talking about it. Okay, here we go. All right. So let's take a look at some of the questions. All right. Now that I've destroyed your life, let's see if I can destroy or explain how your life has been destroyed by my company. <laughs> let's see if I can destroy anybody else's lives. That were submitted. Um, as always, if you have questions or comment in between, feel free to jump on in as well. Um, oh, the biggest asshole in the world is coming. I know. So he will jump in and make comments. Let's see. Feature requests. Are there any plans for providing a download button in the new search console for the performance graphs? Uh, currently, I can just don download the queries, pages, countries, devices, and search appearance, but not clicks, impression, average position without using the API. I thought you can do that uh, directly in, in the user interface in the new search console. I'll double check with the team and otherwise pass that on to them because that sounds like something that uh, a lot of people would be doing. Uh, does the alt image tag play a role in rankings for non-image search? Should we be putting descriptive comments on what the pictures are to help with general search results? Uh, so the text in the alt attribute for image tags is seen as a part of the text on the page. Uh, so that's something where- That's a nice clue. Where it does help us a little bit to understand that page better, but- That's a bigger clue. For most cases, it'll be that we already have this text on the page somewhere anyway. Uh, so just by also having it in an alt attribute for an image tag wouldn't change anything. It does play a big role for image search though. Uh, so if you have images that you want to have appear in Google images, 
then make sure that you have a clean alt text there. Um, also, make sure that you watch out for the other aspects that re relate to image search as well. The way John Mueller makes it sound is that, you know, as long as you say the keywords once, we know what you're about and they can understand it like a human being. But sadly, our, our experiments and, our, and, and just looking at the, the, the SERP every day shows that that's not the way it works at all, John Mueller. I don't know if the engineers have just failed to give him the, the, the hint that ever since April, keywords, we've gone back to 2001's keyword stuffing, and that's the way it is. Uh, but that's how you get a Latin page to rank with nothing but Latin on it with English uh, headings. But that's, uh, that's, that's the way it is. But John Mueller doesn't appear to know. Um, hang out to go. I asked about the above default algorithm and how it would be handled with mobile first indexing. Um, so basically, are you using the mobile version for the above default algorithm or not? Uh, we, we do try to use the mobile version as much as possible. So a lot of our algorithms are shifting over to using the mobile version of the page because that's something that most of our users see. Uh, so that was a very interesting admission. Pay close attention. He just said that they're trying to move most, and that will probably mean all or a large portion of their algorithms that rank your site are going to be using the mobile version of the site. That could be speed, that could be design, that could be keywords, that could be links, that could be internal links, that could be usage, that could be user clicks, that could be a lot of different things. So you, I mean, whether or not you have a lot of mobile traffic on your site, you should be looking at that mobile traffic and what it does and looking at the mobile version of your site for a lot of things, just because John Mueller won't give us a complete list, and you never know what algorithms are, are checking for what type of, of device. Uh, so this is something where it definitely makes sense to focus on both the mobile and the desktop version when you're evaluating pages on, on your website and uh, to think about it from, from that point of view as well. So don't just focus on what Google's algorithms do, but think about who your users are and what devices they're using and what they would see. Oh, that was a huge admission. If you're not paying attention, that was a huge admission that user clicks matter because <laughs> what they see is what they're clicking on. He just basically admitted it. He's made it so many times if you pay attention. But right there, he also admitted that it's both on mobile and on desktop. So keep that in mind. Um, Apparently, he's the let's SEO. Let's see. Uh, searching for a brand name no, brings up the, the knowledge graph. However, the logo gets taken from a different source. Uh, then our organizational markup points out image size and implementation is as the guidelines state. Any idea what we can do? Uh, I took a quick look at this and looking at the page, it seems that we're pulling out the same logo that you're showing on the page and also matching the same logo that's shown in on the Wikipedia page. So I could imagine that our algorithms are a little bit confused there because for yeah, yeah. the something where logo, logo. Uh, all our sites currently serve a standalone interstitial for country language selection based on the IP detection. Uh, users have to dismiss it in order to keep browsing sites. Is this okay? Or am I at risk of Google not being able to see the content behind the interstitial? Uh, yes, that's a possibility that we wouldn't be able to see the content behind the interstitial. Uh, so our recommendation for these kind of depends how you do it setups is to use a banner instead of an interstitial. Uh, so if you can recognize that the user is coming from a different location than your page's target, well, if it's a CSS interstitial, then they'll, they, then the Google can read the whole page. But if you're doing some kind of like meta refresh interstitial or some kind of JavaScript server side JavaScript interstitial, they could probably still read the whole page, but they might not bother clicking through. Uh, so that could be a problem, but unlikely. Show a banner on top so that the user can select the, the other location yeah. and go to that version instead, uh, but that the user still has the option of seeing the page in the original format that they clicked on. Uh, so sometimes, for example, a user might be in a different country, but they're actually trying to look at the page in their own language or for their previous yes, capsules, yes. we would not be able to crawl and index the French version. Uh, whereas if you use a banner, um, how would Google react to if it sees the H2 above the fold and an H1 below the fold? Uh, also with HTML5, you can have as many H1s as you want. How about 
different H2s, and you, and you have several of those as well. Uh, where that okay, so this is a problem. You never ask John Mueller, can I? You never say, John Mueller, can I do this or can I do that? That's the wrong thing to ask. You need to ask him if there will be a ranking problem if I. Because can you? Sure you can. He doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't give a shit if you rank. You want to ask him, will I have a ranking problem if I do this or do that? That's he's not always gonna get that's the best way to get the 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 highest quality answer, <laughs> if you will, out of John Mueller. Of course, that's not that's not a very high quality of answer, of course. Um, as you well know, I've shown many times, John Mueller, what John Mueller says is, oh, just down here at number four of in ranks of evidence, the first being uh, single variable experiments like we're doing in my mentorship group, secretseo.guru, and then the second best being uh, correlation studies like you get from Cora. Uh, but what Google is saying is down here, it is, it is a kind of evidence and you can use it to suss out the, the SEO uh, ranking factors to some very minor fuzzy degree, but if this is what your 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 game is based on, uh, the third to fifth rank of, of evidence, then, then you're gonna be completely and totally screwed. Definitely very flexible with regards to our understanding of headings on a page. Uh, so we use headings to better understand the context of the content that you have there. Boom, therefore use headings and use them in a logical way. He just had told you to use headings and use them in a logical way. And if you have an H1 on top or if you have an H1 on the bottom and you have a little bit of context there, then that's perfectly fine for us. Uh, we don't have... Whether it's perfectly fine for them doesn't mean you're going to rank well. <laughs> Pay very close attention when he says, that's perfectly fine for us. Of course, it, it, it's so obvious. It's perfectly fine for us. It's not going to be perfectly fine for you necessarily, but that's not what you asked because you asked it the wrong way. Have a limit with regards to the number of headings that you can have on a page. I would really focus on what, what makes sense for your page, for your users, and... Boom, so he just also admitted, yes, there is a limit, and what makes sense for your users, hmm, I wonder how they calculate that. Could it be possibly, oh, I don't know, relative to all of your competitors or something like that? I don't know. I'm not saying what we found out in our scientific testing, that's sure to boost your pages 30 to 40 spots if you follow it. And uh, you look at it that way, rather than to think about how Googlebot might might be limited from there. Uh, I know a lot of people sit, like to say that you, you should only have one heading on a page or one primary heading on the page. And uh, sometimes I think that's a good practice, but uh, Googlebot is used to seeing a lot of different kinds of pages. And some pages have one heading, some have no headings. Uh, some have multiple headings on the same page, and we have... And some rank better than others. John Mueller, we didn't ask you, what can Googlebot parse? <laughs> they want to know, is there going to be a ranking problem if I do this? And that's what you should have been answering to begin with. I wouldn't worry too much about that. I would. I would worry a uh, lot. In the past, you explained that Googlebot or Google is not researching author backgrounds, expertise, etc. cetera. Uh -oh, here uh, we go. Can you say the same thing for site reputation and better business bureau scores? Uh, for example, some believe that BBB ratings and reviews are used algorithmically with the latest core updates. Uh, that doesn't make sense since the BBB is only for the US, Mexico, and Canada. Uh, I can't imagine that Google would use a single source like that algorithmically when its algorithms are mainly global in nature. I Okay, so this will be very interesting. <laughs> I would venture to guess that you are correct, that uh, we wouldn't use something like the BBB store uh, for something like this. As far as I know, that... That doesn't mean you're not going to use some other kind of British equivalent. It's certainly the case. Uh, there are various kind of issues with regards to some of these uh, sources of information about a business, about a website, and we need to make sure that we're really reflecting what we think is actually relevant for users, uh, rather than blindly relying on some third party's ratings. Uh -huh. uh, what if it's not a third party? What if it's the first party? Who's the first party? I don't know. What am I saying? I'm not sure. Is there a trick to what I'm saying? Maybe.
Uh, if we put the text from customer reviews on our website, can we put the same review text on more than one page? Uh, so you can put the same review text on more than one page, of course. You uh, can, but when but... it comes to marking up reviews with structured data so that they're shown in search, those reviews must reflect that kind of primary topic of that page. Uh, so, so you can't put your product review on your index page unless your index page is all, all about your product and only about your product. Product A uh, review has to go on product A page. Product B, product B, product C, product C. Review of the company goes on the on the about us page or up on the index page. You can't mix and match those reviews, and you have to link out, or you could possibly get a manual penalty. Although you can put review stars anywhere you like and get them to to rank if you do the if you don't have a quality problem. If you don't have a quality problem. And you do the schema correctly, you can do it. But if you don't link out to the third party, then you will eventually, it's entirely possible you can get a manual penalty, especially when your competitors out you. If you have a product that you're selling, those reviews must be about that product, not Indeed. about copied reviews from other websites that you're re re reusing. It should really be yes, used yes. by those 10 reviews. Okay, here we review. go. Copied reviews. Re reusing it should really be something what is that uh, users are able to leave on your site directly. Hi, John. Regarding the reviews, what happens if I have multiple reviews and the review will change every single day? Uh, based on the gu uh, guidelines of the structured data, should I mark, like say, I got 10 reviews on the pages, but those 10 reviews will update every single day? Should I mark up those 10 reviews? Um, how do you mean they, they change every day? Uh, because there's a new review comes up for that product. Like people purchase this product every single day, then the review will be fresh oh. and then the, oh, the legacy one will go to the second page. Okay. So, so it's not that you're like hand picking different reviews every day. I, I think that's perfectly fine. If these are just uh, kind of new content that's coming available on that page, and you're moving the other reviews to maybe like a review archive page, if you will. Yeah, but the problem is, is that you're not allowed to mark up your own reviews. You can only mark up third party reviews and repost them with a citation or, or a reference back to where you got them from. You, I mean, you can mark up your own reviews all you like. You can claim you got 20 five star reviews, but you're gonna get a manual penalty and Google's not gonna show your stars and you're gonna get a manual penalty into motion if you don't uh, attach those reviews if you're not getting a review from a third party and, and using that third party review. So he can have new reviews all he likes. They gotta be on a third party, not on his own site. Uh, where well, you have a collection of all of the reviews and that's that's perfectly fine. So Google can uh, update it when once the review mock call is being updated. But... Exactly, yeah. Okay. yeah. Thank you. Hey, John. Yeah. Whoa, uh, I've got a question. Right. Um, so related to mobile first indexing, Jesus uh, Christ. so we have a website or several and turn your mic down, you stupid shit from the homepage, uh, you can click into a category and on the category page, it lists, okay, here are the subcategories and here <laughs> it lists products on the category page. <laughs> I thought it up myself. Here's a set of products and you can, you know either check out the existing products or click further into subcategories. Oh my God. On the mobile site, uh, we have the ability to click into a category, but you don't see any products until you click into the deepest category level. Uh, and sometimes that might be three, four, or even six. Or it could be seven, eight, could be nine, even 10, maybe 12, 13, possibly 14, 15, 16, could be 17, maybe even 18, occasionally 19. Fix deeper. Oh. How big an issue is that in the difference? Uh, I, I imagine what we'll see is those product pages. Did you see John Mueller look up there just a couple seconds ago? Here, let me go back and see. Let's see. Okay, we're at, uh, we're at 1942. We're in 1942. Now let's go back just to 38 here. Watch John Mueller. Uh, I, I imagine what we'll <laughs> see is... He's looking up. He's like, oh, if I got to answer this side of a bitch, that's a dumb thing. Yeah, if you're ever asking a question and John Mueller is like looking up at the ceiling, you know it's the it's either a dumb question or you're doing a dumb SEO thing. Those product pages not performing as well. It's possible, yeah. 
<laughs> possibly. Yes, possibly you have screwed your site up completely if you make the user take 80 million clicks. So with, with mobile first indexing, we would only use a mobile version for, for crawling and indexing your site. Uh, so if on the mobile version those pages are linked in a suboptimal way, then that's that's what we'll have to use as a basis for crawling and indexing the, the rest of the site. Uh, so that's that's something to, to kind of think about there. Um, what, what I'd recommend doing in a case like that is maybe checking with uh, one of the third-party crawler tools that are out there to, to see how your website is crawled in the desktop version and how it's crawled in the mobile version. And to try of course, it should just it should just be responsive design. It should all be the same site, but he's probably not done that, and now he's totally screwed. Try to look at the results and think about: is this really bad, or is this just like it's really bad? Be different. It's like this this one crawls like this, and the other one okay, crawls. Blah 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 blah. Okay, uh, and a follow up question. Oh God, and somewhat related again to to mobile first indexing and pagination. So on a desktop site. Um, as you look at a set of products, you have the ability to bounce, you know, from, Shut up. you know, you're on page one and you can go, you know, five clicks off of that. Uh, and five clicks is four clicks too many. Let's just move on to the, when he's done his stupid question. Here's John Mueller. Oh, I see that. That's another view. When you see that face on John Mueller, you know you're in trouble as well. I, I think there is also no, no absolute answer for that case. It, it's really just the case that we would crawl and index the mobile version there. So if the mobile pagination is different, that on its own is not so a problem. Don't um, do but that. But we'll only use the mobile version for the pagination. So okay, now this guy's if, if this the mobile guy pagination doesn't, ask doesn't a work at all, then that Get would be a problem. Right if it's just slightly different, then being to like second page and third page of the canonical, should I also set a canonical as the second pages and then? No, yes. only one page is a canonical. Yeah. And so you have to set a net for the pagination as well? Exactly, yeah. Okay, so then Google will, will crawl the second and, and third. Okay, so I don't need to. If you do pagination between the pages, the real next prev code, then you're gonna make all the pages a big giant page. Basically you're making a big giant page and so all those pages are gonna rank for the same stuff. There's no need to do that. You can leave it all alone. Google's going to handle it perfectly fine. This is not SEO. This is HTML. If you can't learn HTML and how to make HTML, get out of SEO because you're having trouble. All the pagination pages back or can go back to the main ones. Exactly. So if you set the canonical back to the main one, there, there are two things that could happen. One is that we look at the pages and say, these are different pages. We'll ignore the real canonical, which doesn't help you. Uh, or what could happen is that we follow your rel canonical and we only index the main, the first page. <laughs> Which means that there was a total waste of time for you to do. It's not going to help you at all. It's just helping Google to remind them not to go and crawl those pages again because <laughs> they were always going to make their own decision anyway. <laughs> uh, so if there's a link on the second page that is critical for finding new content on your website. This is what Google thinks SEO is, making it easier for them saving them money. That's why they let SEO exist. And to the, de to the degree they let it exist, because it saves them money. When SEO stops saving them money, then that's not what SEO is. And that's spam. That's spam he had. Or that's that's black spam or whatever they, they call it. The stupid, stupid, stupid. Okay, what's this? Thanks. Sure. Yeah, you're no problem. Anytime. Save us money. Right. Thank you. The file of spam report tool is woefully inadequate inadequate. Uh, why is there not a better way to report spam? We have competitors that are top in their market, oh, but they're using verifiable fake testimonials. But John, they're using backlinks and now they're using words on their pages and I can't I can't figure out how they're all ranking me, John. I can't I can't just can't take care of it. I can't, your your spam form is woefully inadequate. Can't I just push a button on their page and just flush them down the toilet? Because I'm better than them, John. I'm better than they are. And I deserve to rank more than them because I watch every video you've ever put on the YouTube. And I deserve to rank more. That's what it sounds to me like when people say those questions. Uh, aren't actually at the address they claim and have tons of fake reviews on third-party sites. They have tons of fake reviews. They're all fake. I know for a fact. <laughs> uh, 
and they're buying links. Uh, and they're buying links. I know for a fact they're buying links because I have I know magically that this happens, and I make wild guesses and and I know things magically. Uh, so how do we report all of that to Google? I will just note the web spam form. Everything he listed there, the web spam form does have a specific input field for. Just just FYI, just saying, just you know, just saying. Um. That's something that sounds like you have quite a collection of stuff there. Uh, if you want to, you can send that directly to me. Uh, on Google Plus is probably the easiest way to do that. You can send a, a private message. Way to get with the social media, John Mueller. Google Plus is dead, don't you know? Didn't you get the message? Wait for the details there. Uh, in general, with web spam reports, what you can also do is link to a document with more details in there. Um, Call it. I am a rat dot txt. And so in particular, if, for example, you're, you're finding a bunch of paid links that are pointing to a website and you'd like to report that to Google, okay. then uh, uh, take a look at what you're reporting and fairly quickly figure out in which Jesus. what the quintessence of your spam report. The quintessence? <laughs> wow. I don't even know that. Could you use that word that way? I don't even know if you, wow, the, the quintessence. I like that. It is then that can result in the web team saying, okay, we need to kind of shelve this for the moment and look at it when we have a bit more time. Like you could be a complete jerk and you can write an article about how someone who is a, a damn sexy man and a, and a much better SEO than you'll ever be ranked a page in Rhinoplasty Plano and then you, you out it in Search Engine Journal and then Google destroys all of his pages and makes life really rough for the guy. What a good idea. So kind of short and to the point, that really helps. Uh, <laughs> Please don't go on too long when you're outing, when you're ratting out all these people who you, you just presume because of your millennial moral uh, superiority that you think you should be ranking as opposed to they should be. Uh, when it comes to link issues, including a link to a spreadsheet, that yes, yes. options on the URL structure. Uh, we have nailed this down to two options, subdomain or subdirectory. Oh my God. These subdomain subdirectory questions. Okay, uh, let's already, see. already talked about How this international markets. Uh, so I I assume you're looking. You have a generic top level domain like a dot com website, and you're looking at uh, talked about it's it. Something where I would look at more into kind of the the details of how you want to maintain that in the long run. Are these essentially the same site on the same server and it makes sense for you to keep it all on the same host name? Then maybe subdirectories make it a lot easier for you. Uh, they... uh -oh. Look at that. Some big asshole joined. Look at that big jerk. Oh, what a guy. Stupid. They certainly make it easier to, to maintain things like uh, search console information. You just have one site that you need to verify. Uh, you can use a subdirectory. Because installing two would be very difficult. To set the geotargeting, uh, but you have all of the tracking information in one site in Search Console. So that's, that's kind of useful. Uh, also, all of the settings that are host-wide, that are server-wide, they're in one place. So you can set the, the maximum crawl speed. You have one robot sex file. Why would you ever want to? You can't set your crawl speed, John. Why? You, you, you guys choose that. You could tell it to crawl slower, but that'd be the dumbest thing to do in the world because they'll back off automatically when you're slowing the server down anyway. So yeah, let yeah, please Google, crawl my site slower so I can rank worse. That's what, what a fantastic idea. There are kind of fewer things that can, that can break there. So from that point of view, I think that generally makes sense. However, if you really need to split this up for whatever organization or means uh, into different servers or different hosts than using subdomain. Oh sub God, you know. yes, you could use either. So shut up. That I so thank you for answering. Uh, my question is related to sub. We want to see your papers. Subdomains. Um, I have read through articles, but if I would use the subdomain approach, um, so let's say I have a, my website is website.com and I have a specific, I don't know, ranking on SEO, I've been working a lot of this and stuff like this. I want to start using subdomains. Let's say I'm uh, pushing for German market and we'll be like de.website.com. Uh, and articles are saying that I would lose my ranking from my generic website when I'll start using the subdomains. It doesn't matter. 
It doesn't matter. If you're not flowing internal links to it, there's no domain rank. So if you're not flowing internal links to it, it's not going to work. It would be technically an external link between a subdomain to a subdomain, but it doesn't matter. You're flowing external link juice anyway. Internal links have no inherent value. So pick a, pick a directory, pick a subdomain. It makes absolutely no difference. Qu quit asking this goddamn question. So market splitting it up approach to kind of focus on them. Domains are used for completely separate purposes, uh, situation where you'd see because yeah. I don't use the ranking from my example.com main website. Probably. So at least. <laughs> yeah, maybe you will. Maybe you won't. Don't change your URLs after they're already made. That's, it doesn't matter how you want to change URLs after they're already made. Don't change the URLs after they're already made. Initially, uh, individually. Long. Uh, I'm running into a situation. I, oh, I Jesus, who's this guy? Everything on a separate, on the same host. Who's this terrible guy? If you guy. can keep everything on the same host, then... What kind I of crappy question is he going to ask? It's, it's also much easier for maintenance long term. This could get very meta. Thank you. This could Sorry. get very meta in a second. All right. Can hey, 503. Oh, go for it. <laughs> Sorry, John. I have a similar question to that, so I thought maybe I'd, I'd jump in if you don't mind. What a silky smooth, sexy voice. Who is this guy? Okay. Uh, I'm running into a situation a couple of times where... Uh, so handsome. Um, I have sites that are ranking well, but they're not ranking for what the client wants them to rank for. So like they have a ring site that sells rings. They also, for some reason, have a blog and they're blogging about rings and the blog is ranking great. Everyone loves their, their articles about the 16 uh, millimeter diameter gold ring or whatever it is but they can't sell a ring to save their life. And so what do you recommend in that scenario? I... <laughs> Did you hear the bitterness? <laughs> they can't sell a ring. Well, they can't convert for some reason. No one likes their rings, John. Can you help me out? I thought we could either separate out the blog into a subdomain and try and get uh, Google to- Damn, more subdomain questions. <laughs> to, to rethink about the e-commerce part of the site. Or I even thought about drastically moving the blog off to a totally different domain name in, altogether and trying to get Google to rethink about the e-commerce site. Uh, what, what do you recommend in that scenario? Um, I, I don't have any kind of standard solution that, that would help there, but I, I would be tempted to try to keep both of them together. I, I don't think there, there should be any problem with that. Uh, so, I mean, in the worst case, the same site ranks, but uh, it's not that, uh, I, I don't think we would rank the e-commerce site better just because there isn't a blog associated with it. I, I see. Kind of this, this collection of multiple things on the same website, that's, that's very common. That's not something that I, I would try to avoid completely. But you might rank it instead. <laughs> you might not rank it better, John. But you might rank it instead. And that's what I was asking, John. That's what I was trying to figure out. Any indication, any little little wink from the Google gods to see if that was the best thing to do. Because, of course, as I've already ranted uh, throughout this video, changing your URLs once they're done and, and radically changing the site, like deleting a blog or moving to another site, maybe using it as a PBN, perhaps, you know, just for example, or moving the blog onto a subdomain is a rather drastic move to do. But at the end of the day, the content has to be better. I want to give RankBrain one page. I want to give Google algorithms one page. It sells rings. They sell rings. Don't rank them for anything else. Stop falling in love with their stupid blog. And so when Google is is preferring a blog page for uh, no do queries, uh, and when we get down to do queries, we want Google to select the sales pages. That seems to be exactly where Google is getting confused. And so the only way I could think of was 301ing the no do to the do or or separating the, the sites. Now, a couple seconds ago, John Mueller just wagged his head side to side to side. I've watched a million hours of John Mueller videos. Let me see here. We're at uh, 3359. So let's go back to 3354. Watch his head move side to side. You're running the no do to the do or, or separating the, the sites out and making Google kind of completely rethink the, uh, the pages. But you, but you think they can also... Oh, I didn't go back far enough. Let's go back a little farther here. So we're at 3404. 
Let's go back to this. Referring a blog page for uh, no do queries. Uh, and when we get down to do queries, we want Google to select the sales pages. That seems to be exactly where Google is getting confused. And so the only way I could think of. See, he's like, confused us, Google? No. But he didn't say no. He didn't say no. He shook his head as in, like, side to side as if maybe, maybe we're getting confused there. And that's the exact problem that I'm trying to diagnose for some people. Some people's sites, they rank, no problem, boom. All the sites rank. But the, it's, the question is, do you want to rank for the golden keyword that you want, right? And so they all are ranking fine, very good. But it's like some some of them are not ranking for the, the right thing. And Tank Brain is not choosing the, the sites for the right thing. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this, where Google's like, I'm going to rank your blog all over the place. But these sales pages, nope, you're not going to rank at all. Now, he's suggesting you could leave them alone. But this is a similar uh, suggestion that Google has made before, that you shouldn't be deleting pages that are low quality. You should be uh, improving pages that are low quality. So if there's no reason why I need to keep that blog on that site. I can definitely route the link juice from the original site to the blog and link back to the sales pages, maybe increasing the link juice in the process because now they're all in external links as opposed to internal links. But it, 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 it's ridiculous that that tank brain gets so confused between these different pages. But then again, Google always has the out to say, well, they're just not high quality enough. They're not converting well enough. Mega, how well do they need to convert? We need to match Amazon's conversion levels. You know, good luck. But anyway, <laughs> sorry, my long winded point was watch when John Mueller shakes his head like that side to side. Mm, Google's getting confused. Maybe that wasn't a direct denial, though was 301ing the no do to the do or or separating the, the sites out and making Google kind of completely rethink the uh, the pages. But you but you think they can all stay on the same site and we just have to improve, improve the quality then of the do pages so that so the, uh, Google says, oh, okay, these guys also sell rings, great, let's let's rank those. Probably, yeah. You know. Probably. So usually that's that's really just a sign that we think. Why did he say probably there? It's a pretty simple theoretical question. If we improve the quality of the do pages, then Google could decide to rank them, probably. I mean, yeah, of course, there's other factors other than the quality, of course. But why do you say probably? The answer there should have been yes, based on what he previously had just said. More or less yes, all of the things being equal. I don't know why he said probably there. That makes me a little nervous, of course. These blog pages are more relevant for these particular queries. Uh, mm -hmm. which, which might be the, I, do, I don't know the, the situation and what, what people are searching for there, but that, that could certainly be the case. Right, of course, certain no queries and no do queries. They're gonna want an advertorial, they're gonna want a blog page instead of a e-commerce kind of page or a sales page, grant it. Um, but, uh, but clearly on clear, clearly the, the sales intent, transactional search queries, do search queries, buy, silver ring buy wedding ring online these are people with their credit card in hand who want to buy these things they shouldn't be getting a blog page for that john they should be getting a sales page that's the issue and of course you can always go back and say well i guess your quality on those pages is just not good enough aka your conversions your micro and macro conversions because oh, oh uh hint google's been tracking traffic for like four or five years your micro and macro conversions on those pages are just not good enough. And so they need to get better. Yeah, I, I don't think there's kind of this one answer fits all for, for that kind of situation. And what... He could also mean that, sorry, we just rank brands, you're never going to rank, and that's just the way it is. That is possible. Uh, the only way to disprove him on that is to rank something up against Amazon and see if you can beat them. Uh, you, know, uh, <laughs> you know, good luck. I would also take into account is kind of the, the other content on the blog. Is it all themed for the same thing? Or is there some completely random content on the blog? And if it's kind of partially overlapping, but not completely overlapping, I think it might make more sense to split the blog up. Now, and here's the other problem. He just admitted that if you have uh, 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 errant content or non-topically related content, on the same blog, he said this many times, that that blog is going to have trouble ranking. It's going to have a demotion. Okay, fair enough. 
But what exactly, how far away does it need to be to be non-related content, right? Uh, how far away does it need to be uh, for that to occur? And he makes it sound here like in the Hangout that, okay, well, if it's a, and I make a joke, uh, you'll hear my joke, but if it's a, if it's, if it's a blog that's about, uh, if it's a website selling rings and rings only, and they start talking about bracelets, that that'd be okay. But if they start talking about painting your house, that would be way too far. Well, where is the line there? And quite frankly, in my experience, the line is way, 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 way more harsh and way closer to rings. Even a, even a website selling rings that has tried to sell some bracelets, you're going to confuse Rank Brain. You're going to confuse Google. It's not going to know what, what queries to rank them for. And, and you're going to have some trouble. So, so this is why I had to ask John this question just to see if he can give any insight. I have my own experiments going. But it never hurts to get a little nod from the Google gods when you can. Uh, but you can't rely on that. Of course, you have to rely on experiments, on scientific experiments and Cora, uh, a massive correlation uh, reports with the proper mathematics and science uh, it adhered to. So, yeah, you'll see the joke I make. And again, I'm not sure that John Mueller is right, that it's all rosy, that, you know, that even a ring site can have bracelets, but you'll see the joke I make. So to move it into a separate, separate part from the site, but if it's essentially similar content... There's that subdomain conversation again. To what you have on the rest of the site, then I think leaving them together should be fine. Somewhat related. How close does somewhat related need to be, John? At the end of the day, the algorithms decide that, and I can show you when they try to rank me for stuff that I'm not supposed to be ranking for, or don't want to rank for, that that's the problem. I see. So if they also had a section on bracelets, but they didn't sell bracelets. So I see, I said bracelets on, on, on purpose. Now look at his face. He's thinking, is that good enough? How much do I say? I don't know. See, he's trying to think of the answer. I, I'm thinking more like they had a section on interior decoration. And they were <laughs> kind of focusing on, on never hurts to kiss John's butt and laugh at his jokes. Right. And I, that, that, that's kind of a, a mismatch. But yeah, here's yeah, here's our articles on uh, rings. And also, did you know you can paint your walls like this? And <laughs> yeah, that, that's right. That's kind of the thing where I mean, some, sometimes these blogs do go into kind of personal preferences and like look at this clean, cool room I, I just created, but uh, it it can make it a little bit trickier for us. So. I, I try to find one. AKA don't do that. But I think that actually that the problem there is that it's way closer than he's saying here. It is rings and bracelets is to, uh, uh, if you want to beat Amazon or, or you want to beat the big brands that have really good conversions and all the other good signals, authority, especially link authority, because uh, those two put those two together, uh, conversions, uh, micro and macro conversions, quality score and authority are the two main rate ranking factors, uh, uh, not including on page, of course. And you put all those together, the one has the best of those, especially authority uh, and uh, uh, quality score. You put those two together, that's the brand, right? With all the other uh, signals, uh, assuming MC4 is, is operating. If you don't know what that is, email me, watch my shows. Um, assuming that's operating, you're going to need all the signals. But those, those are the two main signals that if you really throw money at that, that's where you really get your, 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 your bonuses and ranking. And that's how you compete with an Amazon. One main focus for this. Time. But my point is, I think it's going to be way closer. I think rings and bracelets is too far apart. I think you have to laser focus on rings, best rings dot rings slash my rings slash get my rings. Literally something that spammy and that laser focused where there's no bracelets, no talk of bracelets, there's no blog, there's no nothing. That's what you're going to need to, if you ever want to beat out without having to pay the, the close to the same amount of money as an Amazon to, to beat on an Amazon. I see. Okay. Thanks, John. All right. John, yeah. Yeah. Hi, John. Yeah. Uh, John. Uh, John. Actually, I wanted to know like uh, the Links browser. Have you heard of the Links Links browser? So yes. that browser is showcasing the website. You know, so people uh, like I have read somewhere that the browser. The Links browser? You mean like L Y N X? Like the text-based browser? Is that what he's talking about? Shows us actually the, and the search engine how search engine looks on the at the website. So is it? Searching how it looks on the website. What? What? To like, if my website is like links. I mean, no offense. Obviously, English is his second language, and I only speak one. So good on him. But what is he talking about? Is looking at my website and the search engine is looking at my website in the same way. Is it like I mean? 
Uh, I have no idea what I'm asking, John. Help me. Tell me how to do SEO. So the links browser. You got to cut because that's not good enough. So, I mean, I, I don't mean to use my question as, a, as the example, but you got to go in asking John a pointed question where you get him on the horns of the bull, so to speak, to use the rhetorical term. Uh, you get him on uh, uh, where he, if whatever answer he gives you, he's going to give you some information that's useful and learn their language. Go take a, um, a course uh, in information stuff, whatever they call it. I can't remember what they call it, but read some of their patents, learn their language, learn the lingo. And John Mueller is like, oh, you're in the cool club, wink, wink. And he's going to start responding to you better. Don't come on here and ask him about Moz, PA, and DA because they're not Moz. And that's made up and they have no idea what that is and it offends them, right? Uh, everybody likes getting their bread buttered. Everyone likes being flattered. You want to get something from somebody? Be nice to them. Flatter them uh, subtly a little bit. So doing that, coming on here and talking about no and no do and laughing at his joke. <laughs> oh, John, that was so funny. That's how you kiss his butt. And that's how you get information out of him, right? Like if you're going to be a guessio, if you're going to be a guess SEO, a guessio, and not a science SEO, if you're going to be a guessio, and that's going to be your main strategy, boy, you better get better at kissing John Mueller's butt. Because if he's your source of information for how to do SEO, you are fucked. There is a text-only browser that I don't think supports anything around JavaScript, yes, or like, CSS, what, what are you asking me for? HTML features. Okay, yes. Blah, 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 uh, blah, blah, so blah, blah. Having, like some, some very basic issues, uh, but for the most part, that uh, when we see that, we'll generally back up. Okay, see what? Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. All right. No Can 503 server responses have a negative impact on crawling and or rankings? Uh, so 503. Yes, it definitely can. 503 is a temporary server error that uh, when we see that, we'll generally back up, back off from crawling a little bit. So we'll slow down crawling and uh, we'll come back to those URLs a little bit later. Uh, Maybe if we feel like it. Assuming you have maximum quality and trust and authority. If you don't, well, then we'll take a little longer and maybe we'll start deranking you because our, our, we're hedging our bets. Our bet as to whether you are a good response to the search query goes down and down the more you start giving us server errors. So don't. Uh, if we see a 503 error persistently returned, uh -huh. then we'll assume that it's a permanent error. Uh-oh. Not a temporary one. And we'll assume that these URLs that have been returning 503 are actually no longer available on your website. So we'll drop them out of our search results. So if your website is temporarily down and you serve a 503. So don't do that. Okay. So we'll drop them. Uh, if your website is actually up and you use 503. Oh, Jesus. Dude, it's down. It's up. It's up. It's down. We've published articles about this topic while in the last two months. And Carousel is showing articles of two months ago for our site. What can we down What's and this? Server 503. That's perfect. Uh, if your website is actually up and you use 503 instead of a, a normal server uh, response code, then that would be a bad thing. Yes, don't do that. Fix it immediately. Um, why is the publisher Carousel showing articles of two months ago for our site? What can we do? Uh, Wait, what? Who cares? Like, what, what? Where do some of these questions come from? Oh, John, we're not. Our new articles are not showing up on the publisher carousel. You're showing our articles from two months ago, and we like our last week's article. Why? Why is it not showing up? Ah. We we published many articles about this topic while in the last two months, and well, obviously Google doesn't think they're any good because if they did, they'd be there. It happened. Or you have technical problems. As in English and different uh, language versions. Um, I don't know. I'll take a look at that w with the team here to see if there's something uh, more specific that, that we can say there. In general, these uh, carousels that we show in the knowledge graph on the side uh, are things that we algorithmically generate based on the website itself. Uh, we don't provide support on it, and so um, you're totally screwed, and you're completely up to our, uh, our good graces and uh, the quality of our programming. And so, like I said, we're totally screwed. Uh, it's not something that would be reflecting the normal website's ranking otherwise. So it's really only people are looking for your website. Okay, yes, uh, yes, yes, specifically yes. By sites with multiple combined categories, for example, t-shirts and dresses. How do you oh. recommend to split the category in two? Well, in one category, you'd have these things called t-shirts. And in the next category, 
you'd have these things called dresses. And that's how you would do it. Uh, Google doesn't have an inverted canonical tag to kind of say, well, split it like this. Well, you don't need to. It just reads what's on the page. Ah, oh, people. Um, what, what can you do there? Linking... Don't be stupid. That's what you can do there. Stop being stupid and asking John Mueller stupid questions. Within your website to point to that new URL that you have there as well. Uh, if you can't keep the old one, uh, for example, if the old URL in this case is yoursite.com slash t-shirts and dresses, uh, then maybe you want just one for t-shirts and one for dresses, then I would redirect the old URL to one of the new ones, uh, either for t-shirts or dresses, and otherwise just link the new URLs normally within your website's uh, structure. Uh, so there's no specific markup that you can do to say, damn, I'm sorry, but this Ted guy down here, damn, he's sexy. Look at him, Ted, Ted with the X and the exponent. It's a variable exponent sexiness of Ted. That Ted guy is damn sexy. Just, uh, sorry, I had to just. This URL has been split into two halves, or this part of the content has gone here and this part has gone here. Uh, it's really essentially just a new page that you create on your website. And oh, God, it's a new it's page. With the old page is looking into various of these reports and uh, moving them over or regenerating them as, as we go along. I don't know what the specific plans are with yes, regards yes. to and general. Uh, but rather announcing them when uh, the structured data reports, because we have so many different variations of like structured oh, data to report and the structured data in situations and maybe structured data and situations and day situations and structured data and and ah combine two you combine things you also make make it a little bit more complicated because suddenly instead of one simple way to test the URL you have different variations within the same tool. Uh, so we'll see how, how that works out. Uh, but I, I know the team is continuously working on uh, these, these topics as well. Uh, is there okay, now something new. Is there a way to tell Google not to crawl and index certain parts of a page? For example, we might uh, want to have some user reviews on multiple pages uh, because we think this is helpful for the user, but we don't want Google to penalize us for duplicate content. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, they're not going to, okay, first off, there's no duplicate content penalty. And if the page is quality, they're not going to filter it. Uh, you can have gasp paragraphs from other pages on that page, and it's not going to be duplicate content. If that's what you think SEO is, again, that doesn't matter. John Mueller could say rubber baby, baby bongers. Like he could answer whatever he wants, because whatever answer he's going to give, is not going to help you do your SEO, because it wasn't the right question to ask in the beginning with. And that, if that's what you're worried about, Again, your SEO is never going to go anywhere. Uh, can we tell Google to index our pages but skip a few paragraphs from them? Well, you could always uh, hide that out with JavaScript. Or you could always cloak it from them, <gasps> gasp and break their rules. Uh, there is no simple way to kind of hide some content on a page from Google. Uh, they're, they're kind of tricky things that you can do uh, with regards to using an iPhone blocked by robots text. Uh, but blah, in blah, general, blah. we can see the page. Uh, so that's something that you can't specifically do that. So on don't website. cloak. Uh, so that's not something that you need to kind of find a technical solution for because that's very common on the web. We see a lot of uh, product yes, descriptions yes. that are shared across different variations of a product. Uh -huh. Okay. Hopefully some, oh good. This guy's gonna ask a question. This is the most, are you guys ready? Drum roll. This is the most brilliant question I've ever heard John Miller asked ever in my life. Are you ready? Excuse me, I have a question. Sure. Yeah, I could just... This is so good. Just just wait. Just just get ready for this. Jump in. Go for it. Okay, appreciate it. So I'm new to this, the, the whole Google Hangout and, and everything. So, uh, so I have a website, a mental health website. And that is like so... Uh, it makes me so happy when I see that because I know it's going to be the greatest question in the world that I'm not going to get super annoyed. That um, I've uh, had for a year now, and I've been writing a lot of content for it. Pretty much like five articles. And my, my life journey is this, and I've had it for a year. And I've been writing, I've written a lot of articles for it. Me, me, me. It was a week. And I've just recently gotten a lot of really high quality uh, backlinks from really uh, high authoritative websites. Oops. <laughs> Did he just admit? And I just bought a bunch of, you don't, and do not use the, the black hat lingo when you're talking with Sean Mueller. That is not a good idea. I just uh, got 
got, G-O-T, got, uh, probably he meant bought, or just purchased a bunch of high authority links from a bunch of high authority sites, uh, high quality backlinks from high authority sites. Yeah, that, that was really, I'm sure you did it in the white hat way. That was, ah, uh, you see John Miller's smug little face. Mm hmm I know exactly what you've been doing. You've been buying links. Oh, you're naughty boy. And we're really about, about last month is when I started reaching out to, to do that. Uh, my question is, so, so this website... And all of a sudden, our rankings have dropped. What have we done? That is a year old. Um, a whole year, John. A whole year. When, like, how many years or, or when can I expect significant uh, search uh, traffic? <laughs> this is the dumbest question in the world. What can I expect? What can I expect? My fair share of Google search traffic. I've been ranking this site for a whole year, John. Did you hear me? A whole year. And I bought high authority, high quality backlinks from a high authority website. Uh, there's no. <laughs> yeah, John's like, how do I answer this one? Look, he always tilts his head. Uh, Ah, oh, like his neck is breaking. Ah, this guy's like, answer my question. <laughs> I am the SEO master. Ah. No specific limitation there. So uh, it's, it's not the case that there's any kind of sandbox uh, effect where we would hold the website back and say, oh, this website needs to kind of maintain its presence for a year or two years. No, capitalism makes the sandbox nice, just nicely for them. Years before we can start showing it in search. It's really more a matter of us having all of the signals that are available for that website and being able to show it. So that was actually a great admission. It's just a matter of us having all the signals available for that site to rank. All of the signals available. You said not high signals, you said all of the signals available. There's a nice little admission for Ted's MC4 hypothesis. If you don't know what that is, here's the here's the uh, the bit from the, uh, the uh, patent. And basically the MC4 algorithm, blah, 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 blah. The goal of the MC4 algorithm is to produce an aggregate ranking that ignores items, that is to say pages, that are spuriously highly ranked in only a minority of factors. That is to say pages that are only ranking because they have tons of links or pages that are only ranking because they have a great quality score or pages that are only, but, but terrible on everything else or pages that are only ranking because they have a great on page, but terrible on everyone else. That's the MC4 algorithm. And again, that's a very good, what, what John Mueller just did is a very good admission of that. So, you know, again, who knows? So that can happen now. That can happen like when, when you start publishing. That, that, that's completely true. People ask, is there a sandbox? No. Uh, John Mueller is just, he just admitted uh, that could happen now. You can have all the quality, the breadth of different kind of signals you will need to rank relative to everybody else and the breadth of their signals that could happen immediately because everyone else has terrible signals, so it's easy for you to get. Or you're like the hottest shit on the internet and everyone's flipping out about you. And so you're getting links and social, you're getting quality signals because people are going to your site. You've already got the on-page dialed in. You could rank like that. It could be immediate. But you have to have all of the signals that, that relative to everybody else and all the signals that they have. That's why if you don't have measurement tools uh, to like Pop or Cora to determine what everybody else already has, then again, you're going to be hooped. If you don't even know what I'm talking about, you're going to be hooped. Publishing new content, uh, that can happen over time, and, and, or it might happen that it, it never actually happens. So, or it might happen that that never actually happens. So, uh, that's going to be 99% of the time. Maybe you're, you're working on this website for multiple years, but it's still not something that we would consider as being relevant for those particular queries. So maybe it would never... That's his favorite word, relevant. Pay attention to that adjective, relevant. What does relevant mean, right? Think very carefully about relevant could mean in context. What makes it relevant? What makes a page relevant to the search query, best red apples? Just list all the things in your head. And that's actually a good guide for what you should be doing with Google. See that much visibility in search, but at, at least there's no artificial limit that's holding this website back. And saying- uh, Other than your own stupidity. <laughs> oh, you need to have like minimum this amount of time on, on the internet before we can start treating your website appropriately in search. Okay, so there's just- a... <laughs> He's so disappointed. He thought for sure with his cool his cool earphones here, he's gonna come on, he's gonna tell John Mueller, I've been ranking this thing for a whole year, a year. Wow, I, I bought high authority links from a high quality website. 
Why is it not ranking, John? Do you know how good I am? My mom tells me all the time. A million different uh, different factors. We, we... Yes, it's a million different factors. What, what was that shit-eating grin he gave there afterwards? Did it, it was disappointment that, that he just didn't come on here? Uh, didn't get the answer he wanted? Or he's actually a secret black hat? And he knows all the factors. And he was just waiting for John Mueller to mess up. Use, so we say we use over 200 factors for crawling. Yeah. Cora tests over 500 factors. So there. Uh, so a million might be a little bit too much, but a lot okay. of huh. And uh, especially when you're looking at competitive areas, then that's something where some sites might have been there for a really long time. They've built up all of the the kind of reputation and the presence online for years and years and years. And going in there and disrupting that is sometimes really hard. Uh, go in there and say, well, I have this new spin on this topic. This is really novel and not something that other sites have at all. Then you, you kind of have a chance to be a little bit different from the rest. Uh. And that makes it possible to if it's a translation if you don't try and compete with the big brands then <laughs> yeah you can rank just fine you know you can but you, uh, you can't get into the old boys club of the big brands with google and the rest of the big big brands we're an old gentleman's club and we're, the door is closed for you kind of be kind of jumping in you can't sell the peanuts we sell you go sell something else street peanuts or something <laughs> in there as well uh it doesn't guarantee it of course, uh, maybe your site is just very different and different in a bad way. Uh, so different in a bad way. <laughs> it's not. You're not bad. You're just different in a bad way. Those, those are always different options. <laughs> you're not stupid. You're just different in a bad way. <laughs> Thank you. Something I have noticed though. Um... Okay, so let's lay bets here. What is he going to say? I have watched this already, but I don't remember. I, I honestly, of course, I flushed everything this person has said down the toilet immediately when he said it out of my memory for sure. Um, I bet you he's gonna complain that other people are doing spammy tactics. I bet you that's what he'll complain about. What do you think he's gonna complain about? What's your bet? I've noticed a, a lot of really just simple websites, kind of spammy looking. Oh, did he say spammy? Uh, the content, a lot of the content is just the, the same and it's just slightly reworded for, for the keywords and they're like <laughs> ranking at the top in, in Google and they're super old like they're probably t websites that have been in Google for 10 years old for 10 years or so and I'm just one ding 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 we have a winner wondering like how are these websites at the top in Google when they're, they're just so lo low quality I don't know they're not as good as my site John I've been working on it for a whole year a whole year but they just been grandfathered in after all the Google updates and everything. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, he didn't say no. That wasn't that wasn't a denial, by the way. If if you find that they're spammy, I I would definitely submit a spam report. Uh, okay. So that the, the web spam team can take a look. If you're just not sure about the quality, you can also send me a note on Google Plus, and I, I can pass it on to kind of the, the quality team to take a look and see, are, are our algorithms doing the right thing? Ah, uh, John, but what is the right thing after all? That's the question, isn't it? Okay, thanks. I'm sure other people have questions, but I uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. All right. More questions from any of you? Hi, John. Hi, that's you. Uh, uh, who, who's this guy? Do a quick oh, question. Okay, Sorry, me, hi. Ha uh, <laughs> ha! Suck at me, hi! I got my question in, you didn't! Ha <laughs> ha! Can I ask you a quick question about entities? Okay, I'll try. Is it Hummingbird that uh, is the algorithm there that uh, deals with entities for you guys? I think, I think so. Ooh, another one for the Josh Meister. I think that's uh, kind of when, when we started talking about entities in search, yeah. That was June 2013, if I recall. I don't know. It's a long time ago. <laughs> I know more than you do, John. <laughs> we we memorize these things, John. We we watch these things. Um, I, well, I, it's a fun question. I just want to ask, what kind of websites are? It's a fun question, John. I'm not trying to probe into the algorithms at all. So you can you can just let your guard down. <laughs> that that would be you know uh, good to do. Are good candidates for for uh, Google for Hummingbird in this case. So I asked, what websites will be good candidates for Google for Hummingbird in this case? 
to find entities and to kind of uh, categorize entities. Like we know we use Wikipedia. See his face getting more and more nervous <laughs> as I'm zoning in because I'm basically asking, hey, John, uh, what websites are you guys categorizing entities on? Because I don't definitely want to make content on those sites to, you know, uh, hack your entity database and put in information in there to rack, rank higher for stuff. I, that's definitely not what I want to do. Uh, what are the so, kind of websites you think are good candidates there? LinkedIn, uh, Google My Business Pages, et cetera, et cetera? I, I think we, I mean, we, we use a lot of different sources and what, what helps us there is also structured data on these pages. So the, the better we can pull out. Ah, uh, the best John Mueller leak in the last six months. The, the information in a machine readable way, the more likely. Oh, did he say machine readable? This uh, another, the, now this is the best John Mueller leak in the last six months. So we can use that to, to understand kind of the topics and the entities that, that this page is talking about. I see. And so some little little blog somewhere would not be a good candidate to to parse entities. Sure. I mean, we can pick up that content too. So if if we have structured data there and it's it's in a way that we can say, well, this is trustworthy, this is uh, useful information there, then that's something we, we should be able to pick up there too. But the, the data really has to be structured, as you said, and specifically using microdata format or? Um, I mean, it's it's easiest if we have it in structured data because then it's in, in a machine readable way. So again, he says it's got to be machine readable. Yes, they can parse HTML just fine to get a lot of this information, but specifically the more machine readable you can make it using structured data, OG tags, structured data tags, microdata formats, uh, 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 probably JSON, LD, stuff like that. The more structured you can make it that they can read it, the easier you're going to get at, at, at entity construction and the easier you're going to get at entity validation. If you start to know some things, and I'm going to say some stuff that Jordan is going to jump in here and bleep out, bleep, 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 not allowed to say that, Josh, bleep, 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 Josh, Josh tomato, bleep, 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 flowers. Right, right, right. Okay, so machine readable really is the, the key. I guess a well-formatted HTML page would, would suffice in many cases. That would also help us, yeah, yeah. And he also just admitted that he wants a well-formatted HTML page. You know what that means? Go back to your HTML specification. A well-formatted HTML page has an H1 at the top. It has that's that's the main header. Then it has an H2. Then it has a paragraph. Then it has another H2. Then it has a paragraph. Then it has another H1 or something along those lines. The H1 could be the main title. At the main title, heading, subheading, sub subheading, just like the essays you wrote in university, folks. So again, he's also admitted there, and we have tests proving a lot of this stuff and informing a lot of this stuff. You see, the guessios can only get so much from John Mueller. If you're a max kind of guessio, you can extra, uh, extrapolate a lot of what John Mueller is saying and understand, but you really gotta be a science CEO to know what he's talking about, and then all the evidence starts to really work in your favor and really corroborate each other. Okay, great. Uh, fantastic, thanks. Cool. All right, Mihai, you had a question. Hello, John. Um, and let me just say that Ted guy, damn sexy. Look, hope you was was fine. Happy to see you back. Um, so, a quick question about uh, regarding a website that uh, we're working with. Uh, they basically have a software as a service product. Uh, so they have a website that presents the features of the product. Uh, you know, how can you use it? Uh, a lot of content regarding uh, uh, different kind of topics related to to the product. Uh, and now they've also built. Uh, a sort of a tool that kind of indexes uh, a huge amount of pages uh, from the web. Oh, Jesus, come on, Mihai, get to the point. Regarding uh, things, uh, oh, how can I put it? Uh, messages, emails, anything that's regarding issues surrounding certain IT products, uh, like from GitHub. Or so you've been playing with Scrapebox? Is this what you're admitting? Or from a uh, stack overflow or uh, a lot of that stuff so they made a search engine when where you can actually search for uh oh did you say search engine are you making a competitor to google and now you're asking john miller about it all of the data uh so obviously and, and they put it uh just to show you uh so that is the website and uh, the second url is the tool and uh, so that tool creates like millions and millions of pages where before it was just a simple website with, you know, 
a hundred or so pages with content and product features and everything else. Um, is there any way that can, you know, just uh, creating those million plus pages, is there any way that can affect us? Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm less interested in, in rankings, but, uh, but more in terms of crawling and, <coughs> and indexing. So would it be a better idea to use uh, a subdomain for that? Would, would the Google crawler kind of allocate a separate budget so it won't, wouldn't affect the, the pages from the main website? Okay, so this uh, this giant lead up has been a, a, a loser of a question. I'm sorry, Mihai. That doesn't matter. The crawl rate doesn't matter. Yes, yes, Google has algorithms to determine whether or not they're going to go into an infinite call space, like like anything that's way less technical than the, the, the search engine you've created. Any kind of calendar, they already know how to do that. So, so just robot the whole thing out if you don't want them crawling it. Or if you want them crawling it, let them crawl it. They're going to decide how fast they're going to crawl it. And yeah, it's going to eat up the crawl budget of all the other pages in the site. But if all the other pages in the site are 20 other kind of brochure like pages, well, then they're going to crawl those at the rate they're going to crawl those anyway. It's not going to make a difference. So this is a waste of time. Um, I so so to me, this this sounds like it's scraping content from the rest of the web and spinning. Yeah, did I, did I mention scrape box earlier? Getting it together, so. That kind of goes into auto-generated content. And that's kind of against our guidelines, <laughs> Mihai. Low quality content. So this is something I prefer to see blocked by robots text in general. And if you have it blocked by robots text, then it doesn't really matter where you have it on your website. So that's... Well, a lot of that content isn't actually indexable by search engines. So the way they, they sort... Oh, that's a nice ass bitch. No, John, we're bringing you more content that you actually didn't have access to before. Said, like secret personal emails and stuff. You could sell better to it, John. Really, you want it. Uh, really? Ooh. A lot of it isn't found on any other website. This is why they created this search engine, because you cannot actually find most of that information on, on Google. I... I don't know. So, so <laughs> compared to some of the other sites that I've seen do do something similar, for the most right. part, it's it's really low quality content. And okay. uh, when when you're automatically generating this content, that's something that I I could imagine our algorithms looking at that and saying, "Oh, this is this is really low quality stuff. We we shouldn't be crawling and indexing this content." And they might back up. From, from crawling the See, so Mihai asked, thought he was friends with John Mueller, and he's not, and he asked the wrong question. He should have come on here and said, he should have preempted that, that John Mueller's not going to like this scraped content that he's making. Duh. I should have asked, hey, John, I've got a calendar app. I've got a, I've got a, a product e-commerce site that can auto-generate pages in various combinations, and it makes sense for our users to do that, but... It, but it, the, the, there could be many millions of combinations, quite possibly. How do I get Google to throttle the, the crawling there? Is there anything I can do there? What should I do in terms of crawl rate for that infinite section plus the rest of the website? That's what he should have said. And then John Miller would have given his answer. So anyway, the rest of them, just them talking about that. Blah, 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 blah. Forgive me, John. No, I don't want to do it. I'm not going to forgive you. I, blah, blah, blah. No, I'm sorry, John. I love you. I love you, too. I'll be high. Ah. Yeah. That's the rest going to be the, uh, the rest of the conversation. So this has been... SEO commentary.